Pythagoras' result, sides in a right angle triangle. Every major culture has known Pythagoras' result and used it practically. And about 2,000 years ago, people began to think in terms of mathematical proofs. So various cultures have produced proofs of the, the theorem. We won't be going into that. We'll be just looking at its practical application. So the lesson you're doing today is quite an old one, even though we're using a fairly modern medium to convey the lesson. Here's the result. If you've got two short sides in a right angle triangle and a long side, long side is often referred to as the hypotenuse in textbooks. That's why I've given it the letter H. The relationship between the lengths of the sides is quite straightforward. You square the two short sides, so a squared plus b squared, you add them up, and the total will be the same as the square of the long side. So to find the length of the long side, in words, you can say, find the squares of the two shorter sides, add the result, take the square root of the total. So here's an example coming along. Suppose one of the short sides was 12 centimetres long and the other short side was 8 centimetres long. We would then simply square the 12 and the 8 to get 144 and 64 and then we would add them to get 208 square centimetres, although that isn't an area of course. And then finally we would take the square root and get 14.4 centimetres for the length of the long side. Notice how I've rounded that off to three significant figures. That is a convention that's used in these questions, unless the question in the exam paper says something different. Just round off to three significant figures. Now on the next slide are some examples. These are all based on the same logic. You've got two short sides, you're given the numbers for those, and you've got to find the length of the long side. The first two problems, A and B, are quite straightforward. Problem C is slightly different in the sense you've got an isosceles triangle which you can split down the middle, if you see that blue line, into two right angle triangles back to back. So you've just got to make sure you know the length of the short side to use, and it's not 12 centimetres. Problem D is this idea that you can turn Pythagoras' result around, you can square the long side, square the two short sides, add them two up, and compare them. If they're the same, then you know it's a right angle triangle. You've proved that that triangle's right angled. If they're different, you can't say it's a right angle triangle. Now I suggest you pause this video and try and work these out because the next slide has actually got the numerical answers on. There we go, there's my numerical answers. Problem A comes out to be 12.8 centimetres. Now notice that problem B, I've broken my own rule of rounding off to three significant figures. That's because that's a very long thin triangle. And as you can see, the, the longest side is only just longer than the longest short side. That's something you find with long, thin triangles. You've got to be, work quite accurately to find the difference between the hypotenuse and one of the short sides. Problem C, as I said, it's an isosceles triangle, so the short side is 6 centimetres on the bottom and 18 centimetres up the side. So when you do your squaring, you get 19 point naught. It's 18 point something. 19 point naught when you take the square root. And problem D, it doesn't quite work out to be a right angle triangle, but it's damn close. It's a bit like old houses. Okay, that's that section finished. So we're squaring the two short sides, adding, taking square root, that gives us the length of the long side. You can, of course, turn the whole thing round. You can say, well, I've got the hypotenuse, the long side, I know what that is. And I've got one of the short sides, and I want to find the other short side. So then the formula just changes slightly. Suppose A is the short side we don't know, and B is the short side we know. We've got A squared is equal to the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of B. In words, find the squares of the long side and the other short side, find the difference between the squares, and take the square root of that difference. There's a mistake on my slide, that should say difference. So... Here's an example. We've got hypotenuse 10 centimetres. We've got one of the short sides is 7 centimetres. And we want to find out what the other short side is. So, we square the two known sides, the hypotenuse and the short side. That gives us 149. Adding those to get, uh, sorry, subtracting those gives us 51 square centimetres, but it's not an area. Then taking the square root gives us 7.14 centimetres to the nearest, you know, three significant figures. So that, that is almost half a square, but not quite. 
Now here are some examples, same pattern as last time. First two are quite straightforward. Problem A and problem B are quite straightforward. You're given the hypotenuse and one of the short sides, you've got to find the other one. Problem C is once again based on an isosceles triangle, so you just slice it in half and adjust one of the short sides appropriately. And in effect, you're trying to find out the altitude of that triangle. And problem D is based on a square now. The diagonal is 14.1 centimetres long, so you just square that to find the square of the long side. But of course, the two short sides are the same. So see if you can puzzle out how to solve that one. And you might want to pause the video now because the answers come next. Here's my numerical answers. The first two are straightforward, as I said, 10.2 and 73.5. C, if you work it out, the short side you know is 10 centimetres, the long side is 12 centimetres, so then you've got 144 minus 100, and 6.63 is the square root of 44. Now, problem D, you square your 14.1, then you divide it by 2. So you share out the square, the square equally between the squares of the two short sides. So you do the square of 14.1, divide it by 2, and then take the square root. And that gives you the length of one of the sides. And as you can see, it's very nearly 10 centimetres. So those are the two main ways of using Pythagoras' result to solve problems. Of course, you're going to get mixed problems. You're not going to get nicely packaged problems in the exam. You're going to get given a situation where you've got to recognise what problem you're doing. And there's a series of procedures that you do. The first thing to do is find the right angle. Now, if you look at the little purple one, you might notice that the right angle is opposite the long side. Nearly always, um, you can tell which one's the right angle because it'll be marked with a, 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 a square angle sign and it's opposite the longest side. The opposite side is always the longest once you know where the right angle is. If you know both short sides, square and add. If you know a long and a short, square and subtract. Take the square root at the end. That's your standard procedure or flowchart for dealing with Pythagoras questions. So here's a classic example, the ladder leading against the wall. The ladder's 15 foot long and the foot of the ladder is placed three feet away from the wall. How high up the wall does the ladder reach? Right, well, what's the longer side in that triangle? Well, the right angle is always assumed to be between the wall and the ground, by the way. They aren't quite on my house, but they're always assumed to be. The 15-foot ladder forms the longer side. You can tell that by looking at the diagram. The height up the wall is the missing short side because you know that the foot of the ladder is placed three feet away from the wall. I've put the numbers onto the diagram there. In exam questions, they often have some numbers on some of the diagrams. So then the calculation is quite straightforward. It's a subtracting problem. We square the 15, square the 3, subtract, subtract those numbers, and you get 216. You then take the square root, and that comes out to 14.7 foot. Notice the point 0.7 of a foot isn't 7 inches, but they wouldn't probably give you questions in the imperial units and exams these days. Your turn. Go find a textbook. You'll find tons and tons of mixed exercises, and there's plenty on the web as well. Make sure you know where the right angle is, and then check your answers. Make sense. The longest side always has to be less than the sum of the two short sides. That's a fact about triangles. Good luck.